The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Thomas Jefferson. After more than 230 years of selfless service to the nation, our profession of arms is rich in strong traditions and values, highly skilled, powerfully motivated, and totally committed. There is no type of human endeavor where it is so important that the leader understands all phases of his job as that of the profession of arms. Major General James C. Fry. Discussions or reflections about the profession of arms begin with an understanding of what a profession is and how we meet that definition. The Army is an American profession of arms, a vocation comprised of experts certified in the ethical application of land combat power, serving under civilian authority, entrusted to defend the Constitution and the rights and interests of the American people. The Army is a profession because of the expert work that it produced and the fact that the people within the Army develop themselves to be professionals. They're not just time servers. They're not government bureaucrats. These are people who are motivated intrinsically and with a desire to serve the Republic, to defend the Republic, and its expert work. The world in which we operate as a profession has changed. After almost a decade of persistent conflict with an all-volunteer force and with organizational transformation and adaptations underway since 2001, it's time to take stock. It, it, it is, it's imperative now, not, not just a good idea, it's imperative that we examine our profession and ensure that we've got uh, the right emphasis in place to maintain our standing as a profession and to build character. My responsibility, our responsibility as lucky Americans, is to try to give back to this country as much as it has given us. General Colin L. Powell. As a profession of arms, the Army is unique in that we serve only one client, the American people and its civilian authorities. The Constitution is the guide which I will never abandon. George Washington. Uh, our support for our constitutional way of government, for civilian supremacy over, over the military, uh, is something that um, spans and remains the same through all changes in doctrine, all changes in how warfare is fought. Um, it is a constant um, that is, is part of, of our sacred duty uh, as uh, members of the United States Army. I am a soldier. I fight where I am told, and I win where I fight. General George S. Patton. Unlike any other profession, we have been entrusted by our client, the American people, to apply lethal force, ethically and only when necessary, across a full spectrum of operations, including offense, defense, and stability or civil support operations. That foundation of lethality brings with it incredible obligations and responsibilities. And I think it's in understanding those responsibilities that we find um, the, the ethic, that we find the ultimate requirement for character. As a profession of arms, we are guided by well-known army values, creeds, and oaths of service, hallowed words and beliefs. They've been part of our uh, culture, really, for the last 235 years. Uh, specifically, when you look at um, the Soldier's Creed, it really defines who we are as soldiers and who we are as leaders and what our roles and responsibilities are to our soldiers and our organizations where we serve. Most of the uh, operations that we see in the military today are decentralized operations. And, and normally what that means is you're going to have a junior leader, or a lieutenant, or a sergeant that's going out there making tactical decisions that have strategic effects. And there's nobody overlooking the shoulder saying, yes, pull the trigger, not pull the trigger. And the decision that he or she is going to make, because it has strategic, strategic effects, is really going to be defined by the set of values that he or she aspires to. And those values are defined by the values of our United States Army. Living up to our Army Corps values and ethos uh, is what our leadership expects, it's what our allies expect, and indeed it's what the American public expects, uh, those that we serve. 
Numbers alone do not produce military strength. Soldier quality is essential to our strength. This duality is achieved by good leadership and instruction. General Maxwell D. Taylor. Maintaining and fostering our high standards of professionalism is the job of every Army leader. I think the leader's responsibility is to uh, preserve that which defines us as a profession. Expert knowledge, a commitment to continuing education, a certain set of values. Our purpose, our clients' expectations, our culture and ethic, these are just a few of the elements involved in answering the question, what does it mean for the Army to be a profession of arms?